The theory of evolution needs millions of years. 565 million years from the first multicellular organisms to man. Without it, the theory crumbles. They say it took 800 million years to morph from the first cell to dinosaurs to man. It is all based on dating volcanic rocks with uranium, thorium, argon, potassium, and other elements with long half-lives. The problem is that they are measuring how much of the original element is left in a rock, and there is no way to know how much there was at the start, or if some was washed in or out over time. The same goes for the other elements in a rock, such as radiogenic lead. Sometimes a volcano erupts, the rock is dated, and the result is millions of years when we know it happened recently. But it is important to know that long half-life radioactive elements cannot be used to date fossil bones and sedimentary rock. Three types of hard evidence taken together prove that at least the last 160 million years never existed. You know that carbon-14 has been used to date fossils of mammals from the last ice age. You may not know that it has also yielded dates in the range of 23,000 to 39,000 years before present for dinosaur bones, because the test results were blocked from presentation in conference proceedings by the 2009 North American Paleontological Convention, the American Geophysical Union in 2011 and 2012, and by the Geological Society of America in 2011 and 2012. Animals ingest radioactive carbon-14 by breathing and eating. The carbon-14 in them at the time of death decays to nitrogen with a half-life of 5,730 years. Carbon dating measures the ratio of radioactive carbon-14 to stable carbon-12 to get a radiocarbon date. If pretreatment could not remove carbon that seeped in after a fossil was buried, this dating system would be useless. But effective techniques have been developed and radiocarbon dating has been proven reliable with artifacts and organic remains whose age is known historically. Many dinosaur fossils are not petrified, but scientists who defend evolution are highly reluctant to test dinosaur bones for carbon-14. One is on record refusing to do it even when offered $20,000. So a group of retired professionals in science and education who challenged the theory of evolution, the paleochronology group, sent dinosaur bone samples to the University of Georgia's Accelerator Mass Spectrometer Facility for testing. Accelerator Mass Spectrometry, or AMS, is a technique to measure isotopes that has dramatically improved the ability to detect tiny amounts of radiocarbon in samples. It was first used for this in 1977. Radiocarbon dating with AMS is reliable to at least 45,000 years before present. At this facility, it has been reliable to 55,000 years before present since 2010. None of their staff were aware that the samples we sent them were from dinosaurs. They treated the dinosaur samples in precisely the same way that they treat any other bone samples, such as those from Ice Age mammals. With a half-life of only 5,730 years, all the carbon-14 in a fossil bone will decay away in less than a million years. So if dinosaurs are 230 to 65 million years old, there should be no carbon-14 in their bones, but there is. In 1989, a team dug up a skeleton buried just west of Grand Junction, Colorado. It was an Allosaurus, a 40-foot long carnivorous dinosaur. Here we see its upper hip bone or ilium being uncovered. These are vertebrae, a rib, and a tarsal bone that was part of a foot. A bone sample was sent to the University of Georgia for carbon-14 testing in their accelerator mass spectrometer. The result was a date of 31,360 years before present. In 2004, a triceratops was found about three miles east of Glendive, Montana. Only a single femur was uncovered. It was wrapped in protective covering and sawed open. Samples were removed. Testing for carbon-14 at the University of Georgia in 2009 resulted in a date of 24,340 years before present. In 2004, a femur bone from a duck-billed hadrosaur was found in Montana. 
It was dated to 25,670 years before present. In 2007, a Triceratops skeleton was dug up in Montana. It was dated to 39,230 years before present. The remains of a carnivorous dinosaur called Acrocanthosaurus was excavated in Texas in 1984. In 2010, it was carbon dated to 29,690 years before present. In 2011, an Apatosaurus uncovered in Colorado was dated to 38,250 years before present. In 2011, a hip bone of a duck-billed hadrosaur was found in North Dakota and dated to 37,660 years before present. In May 2012, the brow horn of a Triceratops was uncovered in Montana. It dated to 33,570 years before present. In 2011, researchers from Lund University in Sweden found soft tissue and biomolecules in the bones of another creature from the time of the dinosaurs, a mosasaur, which was a giant lizard that swam in shallow ocean waters. They obtained a carbon-14 date of 24,600 years before present. Biologists have long made it clear, as recently as 2009, that blood vessels and other soft tissue in buried animals would be totally disintegrated by 3 million years. If dinosaurs lived 230 to 65 million years ago, there should not be any soft tissue left in their bones, but there is. Dr. Mary Schweitzer, who made the most famous discoveries of soft tissue in dinosaurs thus far, said in a 2005 interview, quote, Scientists never found the tissue before because they did not look. Conventional wisdom told them that organic material must decay within 100,000 years, unquote. So the scientific world was shocked when soft tissue was found in a Tyrannosaurus rex in 2007, and confirmed in other dinosaurs in 2011 and 2013. More was found in one of the horns above the eye of a Triceratops in 2013, and in the bones of a Mosasaur in 2011, and in the embryos inside dinosaur eggs in 2013, and in a piece of dinosaur skin in 2013. This salamander fossil is supposed to be 18 million years old, but intact muscle tissue was found in 2010. Bone marrow was found in supposedly 10 million year old frogs and salamanders in 2006. In 2012, eumelanin, a biological pigment, was found in ink from two cuttlefish fossils supposedly 160 million years old. Remnants of eumelanin were also found in the feathers of three Archaeopteryx fossils in 2013. The survival of soft tissue in dinosaur bones confirms what the carbon-14 dates show, that they are less than 40,000 years old. The geologic column is an idealized picture of rock layers that cover the earth. Idealized because everywhere you go, large portions of it are missing. For about 200 years, geologists have thought that the layers pile up gradually, sometimes fast in a local flood, but mostly slowly averaging 0.2 millimeters per year, always one on top of another. The principle of superposition in geology states that each layer of sedimentary rock was laid down after the one below it. Three sets of observations suggest that this is mistaken. First, experiments by Guy Berteau that injected crushed sandstone, sand, and other particles in turbulent water flow produced a series of horizontal laminations simultaneously Contrary to the principle of superposition, the sand is deposited according to the water's velocity, producing superposed strata. Second, fine-grained sedimentary rocks commonly known as shales or mudstones are the most abundant sedimentary rock type, and they contain most of the fossils. It is commonly believed that they are deposited mainly in quiet environments, but experiments have shown that muds can be transported and deposited at velocities that would also transport and deposit sand. Third, huge floods can deposit thick stacks of sediment over wide areas. Floods with flow rates greater than one million cubic meters per second are termed megafloods. 
A study of this large-scale flooding identified 41 places on Earth where they had occurred. The stack of sediments is typically tens of meters thick, though individual beds range from less than 10 millimeters to 150 millimeters thick. Sets of beds may form thicker groups that get coarser or finer as you go up, and these may form even thicker groups. The repetition of each of these groups throughout the stack provides strong evidence of rhythmic deposition, the acceleration and deceleration of flood waves. Dinosaurs are buried in geologic formations that cover enormous areas, such as the Morrison Formation of Upper Jurassic Sedimentary Rock, which covers 600,000 square miles of central North America, the size of Mongolia. The Hell Creek Formation of Upper Cretaceous Sedimentary Rock, which covers roughly 100,000 square miles of north-central North America. The Horseshoe Canyon and Milk River Formations of the Western Canada Sedimentary Basin that covers 540,000 square miles of southwestern Alberta Province, Canada. The Denver Formation in the Denver Basin that covers 85,000 square miles in eastern Colorado. And the Dinosaur Park Formation in Alberta, Canada. And the Judith River Formation in north central Montana in the Judith River Group that covers a region of western North America. Yet each of these formations is only 100 to 600 feet thick. They are the graveyards of thousands of dinosaurs. If you want to find dinosaur skeletons, that is where you look for them. A dinosaur would have to be buried quickly in order to be well preserved. A 6 to 10 foot wide adult would require at least that much sediment covering. Strata covering hundreds of thousands of square miles, standing hundreds of feet thick, containing thousands of bodies of large dinosaurs buried quickly before they could decay or reburied from previous inundations indicate emplacement by moving water on an enormous scale. Experiments have shown the capability of flowing water to deposit multiple strata simultaneously, including shale or mudstone. Megafloods provide real-life examples. It is true that the organic remains and carbon-dated fossils I described cover only part of the geologic column, from the late Jurassic to the present. Much plant and animal life is supposed to have evolved before then. Yet these last 160 million years are supposed to include the evolution of 88 genera of dinosaurs, 73 genera of Pleistocene megafauna such as mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, giant beavers, cave lions, and giant sloths, over 2,000 bird genera, and modern mammals such as elephants, anteaters, rabbits, horses, rhinoceroses, bats, pigs, camels, sheep, whales, dolphins, cats, dogs, plus 72 primate genera, including man. The hundreds of millions of years assigned to the geologic column and the corresponding ages of the fossils in it are absolutely necessary for evolution theory. Evidence that multiple sedimentary strata can be and have been deposited rapidly and simultaneously remove slow sequential superposition as a guiding principle in the building of the geologic column. The survival of soft tissue and biomolecules in dinosaurs points to burial less than three million years ago, and meticulous testing of dinosaur bones yields radiocarbon dates from 23,000 to 39,000 years before present. Taken together, the physical evidence indicates that fossils in middle Mesozoic and higher strata were buried quickly less than 40,000 years ago. The host of animals that make the first appearance in the fossil record in these strata could not have evolved in such a short time. Without its required long ages, evolution theory can be ruled out as an explanation for the creation of all living things.